Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. Our story here is regarding Black Lives Matter purchasing a $6 million mansion and then being called out for it. And guess what they're going to blame it on? Racism and sexism. No, folks, folks, I'm not kidding here. This is real. It's coming from the actual co-founder of Black Lives Matter. This one comes from Blaze Media. And they say here, Black Lives Matter co-founder claimed new allegations involving the purchase of a nearly $6 million mansion are rooted in racism and sexism. <laughs> this is astonishing. But do you expect anything less from the Black Lives Matter movement and the co-founders? Folks, this is like their third mansion. Okay. And, and I like to point out the same people they've been calling racist, like these rich white people. They're living in the neighborhoods with the very people that they're calling racist. And they're, they're just embezzling money here of like $6 million. They've raised somewhere upwards of like 90 million and 60 million of that 90 is like uncontrolled, meaning anybody can like claim to it. So <laughs> who could have thought that this whole thing would have went south with a bunch of people that are trained Marxists, meaning the founders, you know, that's what happens when you have Marxists running the show for a movement that is obvious that everybody agrees that black lives matter but when it's not going to the black community and it's going to six million dollar mansions sounds like there's a little corruption going on if you ask me well what's the background here that blaze media goes over new york magazine reported this week that blm secretly bought a six million dollar mansion like didn't even tell people about it in southern california in october 2020 using funds donated to the black lives matter global network foundation according to the report blm leadership hoped to keep the luxury property existence a secret in fact documents reviewed by the new york magazine suggested the property's purchase and day-to-day -day operation suggest that it has been handled in ways that blur or cross boundaries between the charity and private owners of some of its leaders Black Lives Matter revealed last year that it received more than 90 million in 2020. So while they're living in luxury, you got some people that are struggling in the African-American community that are hoping to receive some sort of charity work within their neighborhoods or within their institutions, their organizations, their businesses, maybe helping them uplift them by, I don't know, maybe giving new facade on the outside, new windows, you know, try to make it a little bit nice, give back to the community that gave back to you as an organization. But no, 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 folks, folks, what they're doing is just buying luxury uh, houses. I guess the third one here in California, I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed if I was giving my money to an organization that's spending it on crap like this rather than doing good with it and helping the black community like they say they all are for, right? If black lives really matter to you, then treat it as if black lives matter. I agree that black lives matter. I don't agree with what the movement does in, in, in a nutshell with, with getting rid of the nuclear family and all sorts of crap that they've been doing, lighting businesses on fire, African-American businesses for that matter, lighting entire cities like Minneapolis on fire, you know, and claiming that, you know, America's racist and all that stuff. I'm not for that. But I am for, again, you know, black lives do matter. So do white lives, Asian lives, all lives. I should say all lives literally matter. There are some freaking corrupt and psycho people out there where their life doesn't matter. But by far and large, you know, a lot of people's lives do matter, regardless of race, regardless of gender. It's a human life. How did this co-founder respond? In an Instagram post, they claimed on Wednesday, what's happening to me and our movement is both racist and sexist, always blaming everybody else but themselves. And that's the movement in a nutshell, right? It's everybody else's fault that somebody made bad decisions. I'm not saying there isn't racism out there because there is. There's 100% racism out there. There used to be institutional racism. There used to be laws in the books that kept black people down, African-American people. Hell, there was things that kept the Jews down. There was things that kept the Japanese down for a while. All sorts of people were kept down in some way, shape, or form in the past, but we're talking about today. And they want to create an illusion here that America is systemically racist and, you know, clearly sexist as well. So rather than taking personal responsibility for their actions of purchasing a $6 million mansion, possibly embezzling money, buying a third mansion for that matter of fact, and not giving it back to the very community that you're saying is being suppressed and held down, you know, uh, we'll just go ahead and blame everything on racism and sexism because it's easier to look out and shout to the sky than it is to point the finger at yourself and say, oopsie, kind of messed up. Maybe I should give that money back. This is bigger than me. It's about a long history of attacking black people and black women specifically, creating unsafe conditions for us and our families. <laughs> Sorry. Scrutinizing our every move publicly and privately in ways that are unfair and unjust, she claimed, is dangerous and we should all be trying to stop it interrupt it, protest it. Yeah, you know, get out on the streets while you live in luxury and others live in swallow and, and neighborhoods that are gang ridden and all those other things. But you're right, you know, hey, it's totally unfair and unjust while people are coming out and attacking you for spending $6 million on a mansion when again, there's black people out there that were actually suppressed back in the day that had 
you know, certain ramifications for today. Not saying that's a lot of them, but there's definitely some of them that you could have at least given this money to rather than spending $6 million on a mansion that you're not even inviting them to, right? <laughs> like At the very least, if you're going to screw somebody over, at least invite them over while you're screwing them over and at least give them some sort of hospitality. <laughs> but no, no. You know, it's it's us pointing the finger at her. You know, we're racist now for, for saying what she's doing is wrong and that it's morally wrong and it's disgusting and that <laughs> she should sell the house and give the money back to the charity. But no, uh-uh. It, we're all racist and stuff for thinking what she's doing is wrong. <laughs> that's how this works. You know, honestly, it's a 1619 project in a nutshell. It's just all racist. Everything's racist, sexist. It's all against black people, regardless of what the hell is going on, regardless of their own decisions they made, whether they were bad or good. It's all racist. It's all wrong. Well, there's a Twitter post here says yesterday's article in new york magazine this is from the co-founder is it is a despicable abuse of a platform that's intended to provide truthful information to the public journalism is supposed to mitigate harm and inform our communities but she didn't want to inform her community meaning the black lives matter community of this purchase because they wanted to keep it secret see the things that that are are uh you know wrong and disgusting you know you can't call that out because again folks i know i'm repeating myself but you're racist for doing so but then she's going to you know, hit journalism for doing the same thing of calling her out. And, and you know, they're they're just harming her and, and not informing communities, even though that's exactly what they're doing. They're informing the community of the wrongs that they're doing. <laughs> the fact that a reputable publication would allow a reporter with a proven and very public bias against me. <laughs> OK, it, it's victim mentality, right? There's nothing in here that she did anything wrong or, or what. Whoever was involved in this action did anything wrong. It's just, whoa, whoa, me, me, me. And, and everybody's racist. Everyone's out to get me, 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 me. Uh-huh. And other black leaders to write a piece filled with misinformation, innuendo, and incendiary opinions is disheartening and acceptable. I mean, dude, can you get more of a leftist writing here and just utilize misinformation, innuendo, incendiary opinions? It's like, shut up. You fucked up. Get over it. All right. And I love how she has to throw in their other black leaders, right? Because again, it's racist, folks. You just couldn't put in other leaders of the organization. You got to emphasize their race so that that way later on, you can go ahead and play the race card, which she's already been doing. Yesterday's article, again, goes into despicable. That's what she talks about. To clarify again, the property the reporter addressed was purchased in 2020 as a space where those within the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and broader movement community could work, create, contest, host meetings, and foster creativity. Although I cannot speak to how... They use the property. Currently, I left the organization last year in May. It was purchased to be a safe space for black people in the community. But, you know, hey, again, we're going to keep it hidden from the black community so they actually don't come over and utilize it in which it, that's what it quote unquote was purchased for. So the reason it wasn't announced prior. Oh, let's get this is not nefarious as the headline infers. The property to repairs and renovation. I do not own the property. I never lived there. I made it clear that to the reporter. And I want to be clear while I will always see myself as part of a black lives matter community i will no longer in leadership i am no longer in leadership and i'm not a part of any decision making process within the foundation i was never misappropriated funds and it pains me that so many people have accepted that narrative without the presence of tangible truth or facts well when you're doing kind of shady business you know a lot of this money isn't going towards a black community and like i said 60 million dollars is nobody knows who the hell's controlling this stuff you purchase multiple mansions in a white predominantly area neighborhood the same people that you're calling racist everybody's going to be thinking it's a little weird and odd and also the fact again that the leaders of the black lives matter movement come out and saying that they're trained marxists that they're against capitalism that they're against the white person but again will live in communities with them in multi-million dollar mansions i would say it definitely going to raise a few eyebrows that's for damn sure but you know when you start questioning this stuff like i said it's all coming back again uh you're racist in a lengthy statement she called the New York Magazine story a despicable abuse of a platform that's intended to provide truthful information to the public, but she doesn't want to, you know, give information that's truthful to the public. Uh, well, she claimed to the reporter behind the story, Sean Campbell, who is black, has a very public bias. I guarantee you if this reporter was white, what would he be, folks? Ah, uh, there you go. He'd be racist, wouldn't he? But she can't do that because he's black. So she has to turn the tables a little bit, just like every leftist, a snowflake and progressive will do and say a very public bias against her and other black leaders. She said the story is filled with misinformation and innuendo and scenario opinions. Well, she failed to provide concrete evidence confirming her claims. For instance, said the home was purchased to be a safe space where Black Lives Matter activists could work, create content, host meetings, and foster creativity. However, she noted in the story that after he contacted Black Lives Matter last month for comment on his forthcoming story, leaders began discussing internally how to frame the purchase of the home. 
They discussed explaining its purchase as an influencer house or as a safe house. But again, you know, the, the, the African community as a whole aren't being invited there to utilize this. They're just keeping it hush hush for themselves. The day after a board member responded to Campbell, the organization released a statement framing the house as a place for recipients of the Black Joy Creators Fellowship. I'm sure they met up the night before and came up with that. That sounds kind of fun. <laughs> but as Campbell observed, the, the organization's board member did not explain why the house was primarily intended to create a creative space. Relatively little content has been produced there over the course of 17 months. Uh, basically little to zero. And the only thing they've been good for is going out in the streets, protesting, lighting businesses on fire, African-American businesses, like I've stated, and, uh, you know, burning Minneapolis and other places on fire for police brutality and all these other things. So uh, that's the only thing they've been created for. And um, yeah, a little uh, creativity coming out of the house, that's for damn sure. Meanwhile, the uh, co-founder denied having misappropriated funds and reportedly emphasized that she thinks the uh, she left the, last, uh, the organization last year. She claimed the truth about this organization will soon be made clear upon the release of financial disclosure documents required of tax-exempt organizations. The organization has not disclosed finances pertaining to 2020-2021. Of course, because they want it all hidden. They don't want this stuff out there. And the hopes is that she's going to think this blows over and that anything that isn't disclosed, you know, is going to come back and bite her in the ass, which is probably what's going to happen. Because, you know, folks, when you have 90 million dollars, 60 million of which, again, uh, some of this millions is being said that it's even gone. It's not in this article, but there is talks that there's like millions of dollars just missing. Um, I believe James Klug, uh, if you want to look him up, has been on the streets talking about it, interviewing other African-American people that were once for Black Lives Matter. And now not so much when they find out that there's misappropriation of funds, money missing here. Who could have, uh, you know, who could have thought from an organization that uh, does horrific and heinous acts? Again, uh, arson, robbery, theft, you know calling America racist. There's institutions that are racist out there, but don't want to name those very institutions and even go a step further of talking about the acts or the laws that are within those organizations that perform racist actions or at least attribute to a disparity that shows racist actions at the very least. Again, even if there is a disparity out there, it does not mean it's racist. Okay. But that's what they're going to push here. Those are the things they want to utilize to show that, you know, what they're doing is right and everybody else is wrong, especially when they buy a $6 million mansion under the radar using Black Lives Matter money and just living there in luxury while everybody else from that movement is suffering and going through a hard time. I'm using air quotes because not all of them are going through a hard time. They just want to make bad decisions and blame it all on racism and sexism, just like this lady does. Well, there you have it, folks. Black Lives Matter movement co-founder purchasing a $6 million mansion in Southern California, which with a bunch of other racist white people, according to them. Let me know what you think about that down below. Is she taking this a little too far uh, by claiming it all on racism and sexism? Or is she in the right here by saying it's all racist and sexist? Everybody's racist. Everybody's sexist. I did nothing wrong. Just let me know your opinion down below. And folks, don't forget to like and subscribe, share with your friends and family all over social media. And I will see you later today here on The Bald Brad Show.